We thought the wedding would be a small affair. Just Jean's family, whom I had come to love so very much in the 12 short months I had known them. But it seems the celebration of a marriage in this new Scotland was as loath to go unnoticed as it was in the old. And even brief or passing acquaintances chose this occasion to form and strengthen good friendships. And Jean and I wore the tartan that the women of Mingalee had woven and sent out for the occasion. And in my hand, a bit of paper acknowledging the mistake made in my conviction back home lay in the pages of my favourite book. My grander's ledgers. Three very special wedding presents. And ten months and four days later, Robert Gordon was born. And if you're wondering about the delay, it took Jean and I a while to get used to the climate. And if another man had ever known such happiness, he was as unable as I to communicate it. For the sweetest of poetry could not capture what I felt in my heart. And the first years brought a bounty of God's gifts. With financing from Jean's uncle and the skills at shipbuilding I had learned from my daddy, I was able to establish a trade that brought security to my wee household. And in September of the following year, my wee household was made a wee bit bigger with the birth of my darling Mary. And 22 months from that, my precious Heather was born. And the house was full of the laughter and cries of wee ones. Oh, and Jean and I were like weeds ourselves with the joy of them. I can hear Jean's voice even now, high and sweet, as she would sing to them at night in their cots and cradle. Ali Bali, Ali Bali be sitting on your daddy's knee, greeting for a wee bobby to buy some cooter's candy, to buy some cooter's candy. The winter was severe that year and relentless. And on New Year's Day, 1853, the harshness of the climate and the illness from Heather's birth three months before silenced my Jean's voice. At least to all ears but mine. <laughs> 